Hey, what's going on guys? Rago here from Matt So today we're going to talk about two kites that are completely different in design, on the water, and their approach to the different disciplines. The Duotone Dice and the Duotone Rebel. Now all that said, there are some aspects that cross over leaving some people confused on what kite is right for them. Crossovers like big air, high performance, and a rip you off the water feel. Now in 2020, the Dice does have some redesigns, while the Rebel, aside from material changes, remains the same. And rather than doing two different reviews and updating uh, last year's videos on these two different kites, I thought it'd be more valuable to just do a direct comparison on these kites. So we've got a lot to talk about, let's get to it. So for this product shoot, we had a lot of videos to cover, some that can't be released until uh, September and October. So if you click the eye icon, I'll link in the full written reviews, as well as some bonus videos. And after you check that out, feel free to explore our now cataloged kiteboarding and hydrofoiling knowledge centers. We've been working really hard for three years to build the largest unbiased collection of content online. Trick tips, gear reviews, a travel guide, and much more. So be sure to open that in a new tab and just check that out after this video. So let's talk about what these two kites are. We'll start with the Rebel. Now the Rebel is a modern take on a classic design. You know, it's designed for those uh, old school big air riders who want massive air, the most hang time, and probably the easiest kite to use in the range. And what's kind of cool about the Rebel is you get all of this without compromising on that unique crisp rip you off the water feel that you really can't find with the other big air kites. Now don't be mistaken, the Rebel does not do it all. It's a specialized kite designed for a specific person and a specific purpose. So all that said, there are things that you give up. In contrast, the Dice, it excels at these trade-offs, making the choice between these two kites pretty clear if you know what you want on the water. The Dice is what's known as a crossover freestyle kite, and if you follow our channel for a while now, you know that I'm a big fan of this category. It does have many of the same benefits as the Rebel, but it does take more skill to use, and you do trade some things off, like the wind range and the ease of use, for a far more versatile kite. So let's talk about upwind ability and the wind range. Now there is no comparison here. The Rebel rides up wind better and has a much larger wind range. So meaning if the wind picks up, you're gonna be able to stay on the same size longer and likewise, if the wind dies off, you can still continue to use the same size Rebel that you started with. Now don't count the dice out on this one, but it does take more skill. So you're gonna get overpowered quicker on the dice and you're gonna get underpowered quicker on the dice. All that said, if you know what you're doing, if you know how to work the kite, most riders uh, with a bit of experience can hold the dice down and you really can scrape the bottom of that kite's wind range. Now in comparison, you're not going to get as much low end as you would on the Rebel, but if you're an advanced rider, you can get sort of close on the bottom end there. So I do find that I get overpowered on the dice much quicker than the Rebel, and when the wind shuts off, you know, the dice, even though it's not as powerful and it kind of lacks the range of the Rebel. It's more fun to fly and I find in those instances that I do still prefer the dice. However, when I'm lit, this is an instance where I actually would prefer to be on the Rebel. You can get some serious hang time and you have so much depower in that kite. So let's talk about the bar pressure and feel. Now the Rebel, it does have more bar pressure while the dice is lighter, snappier, and more playful. Duotone describes the Rebel as crisp, but if we're going with that word, I would say that the dice is crispier. The main difference here is that the Rebel, it's less direct. It's a more forgiving kite, so even amateur kiteboarders can experience that direct, crispy feel. Now I mentioned that in 2020, the dice does have some redesigns, and uh, namely what they did is they removed a pulley and they modified the bridle. And this is noticeable on the water. I didn't think that this really, um, called for a complete total new review of the dice however if you watched last year's review on the dice more or less all of that still applies to the latest iteration uh, however when we were testing it and i was speaking with our team rider blake olson who was on the shoot with us uh, you know he made a comment uh, about the dice wondering if like using a fifth line had impacted the kite because it did feel different to him and uh, we got talking about it and that's when we learned uh, about the new redesign and what we found is that these changes they have impacted the kite uh, you're going to notice it on the water it's it is going to feel more direct more responsive and just a little a little poppier now in last year's review i talked about how the dice it kind of does require a more experienced rider to get the most out of the kite. And the reason for this is kites like this, kites in the crossover freestyle category, they, uh, they really become an extension of the rider. So with that said, you feel everything, the good, 
and the bad. The good meaning it's very direct and responsive, so you know exactly where the kite is and you can control it with the flick of a wrist. Now, the bad, you will feel the gusty wind more. Not so much in flat water, but once you get into choppy water and gusty wind, uh, this effect kind of becomes compounded. And this is sort of by design. So what it is, is with kites like the Dice, uh, they're designed for on-hook riding. So you can really load and release, and the kite's going to pop and then slack. And what happens is with gusty wind and choppy water, if you don't have good edge control, you can start to load your lines a little bit and they're kind of loading and releasing. And this can make for a really bumpy ride. And now you pair that with the fact that you're very connected to the kite, it has that very direct feel, you're just gonna notice the gusty wind more. Uh, all that said, I found in my first year riding this kite, this was very noticeable for me. You know, by my second season on the dice, this pretty much became a non-issue for me. I was completely used to riding it in the choppy conditions, in the gusty wind. I don't even think about it anymore. And this just comes back to my point about uh, the kite calling for a more experienced rider. So if you are experienced, or once you get that experience on the dice, this really is a non-issue for you. And if you have a location where you're riding in, you know, smoother water, then you're not even going to come across this point at all. Whereas with a kite like the Rebel, if you're riding in just terrible conditions, while it's a direct kite, it's still a very damp feeling kite. So there is like this sense of being disconnected from more or less all the bad conditions you're going to come across. So if you're in gustier wind or you're in choppier water, uh, the Rebel is going to be a more stable kite, a more controlled kite. And uh, because it doesn't necessarily require a more experienced rider, the kite's kind of going to give you a hand in these conditions. So between the two, this is a point of consideration. They both do have a snappy feel. The Rebel is more locked in, more controlled, and easier to use, whereas the Dice, it's that snappy, light, playful, aggressive kite. And just to clarify, the Dice is a far cry from its freestyle predecessors. So a new rider could learn on the Dice. That said, it probably would slow your progress down a little bit. If you're an intermediate or advanced rider, the Dice is actually going to accelerate your progress. So if you are new, don't be afraid of the dice, but I will tell you that the Evo or the Rebel would be a better choice. I'd probably push you towards the Evo as the Rebel is kind of designed for a very specific rider who sort of knows what they're looking for. So let's talk about jumping. Now the easy answer here is that the Rebel jumps better, but the real answer is it depends. And what we found is experienced riders can get just as much air and height out of these kites. And if you know how to work your kite, meaning heli loops or kite loops, you can get just as much loft. So by default, the Rebel, it does jump easier. It's uh, going to go higher without any skill. It's going to have more loft, and it really does kind of have that glider-like design where you go up, all you have to do is sheet in, and uh, you'll get more downwind drift as well out of the Rebel. So this is really aimed at those riders who like to do uh, big air tricks that require a lot of hang time, like board offs, or just anything where you want to spend more time in the air. It really is a prime choice for that rider who just wants to go big and stay hooked in. In contrast, the dice is aimed at somebody who wants something more extreme. So it's for that rider who wants to get really sendy, whether they're doing down loops, kite loops, heli loops, just getting really active with the kite, and they want something that's very powered while doing all of this. Now I mentioned earlier with the dice, you have complete control of the kite. And that means when you're loading it, when you're sending it and flicking it into the air, you really have control over your jumping experience on this kite. So naturally by default, the dice being a uh, crossover freestyle kite, it is going to have less loft than the Rebel. So that means, you know, when you send the kite, it's going to explode off the water and you're going to come down much faster. And the only way you're really going to get good loft out of this kite is if you're, you know, on the powered side of the kite's wind range, or you incorporate some heli loops into the jump, which uh, if you've been riding for a while, you know that's a really, really fun way just to extend your air time and uh, make jumps look a little bit better. And this really comes down to what you want out of your experience. So if you want kind of more of an autopilot feel from your kite, you'd want to go with the Rebel. If you want to be more engaged and interact with your kite and just incorporate more kite movement, a little more intense, you would want to go with the dice. And just on a side note, and I kind of covered this in the uh, review that we did last year, but the Rebel, it's had a cult following for a long time, and it really is still the most unique big air kite out there at the moment. Uh, in 2020, we've seen some new big air kites emerge on the market, but they all have their own different feels, and at the end of the day, nothing quite feels like a Rebel. 
So the main takeaway here is the rebel jumps easier, it's loftier, yet it still rips you off the water. While the dice, it's more interactive, snappy, and explosive. So let's talk about kite loops. Now, there's no competition here. The dice, it's going to kite loop way better than the rebel. In fact, I would choose the dice 10 times out of 10 over the rebel. All that said, can you loop a rebel? Absolutely. I've seen some videos online of some people throwing some pretty serious loops with the Rebel. All that said, in Duotone's lineup, the Rebel would be my last choice for kite looping. Moving back to the dice, kite loops were something that the designers had in mind while creating this kite. We even included it as a top pick on our How to Kite Loop playlist for this channel. Now I do want to point out that powered kite loops on the dice they can be intense unless you're doing them at the edge of the wind window. So if you're a new rider who wants to get into kite looping, you'd be better served with going with a kite like the Evo that has far less pull when you're going through that kite loop. And for the rest of you out there, riders who just like to do, you know, basic kite loop hand drags or back roll kite loop hand drags or anything where you're looping the kite more at the edge of the wind window, the Rebel's still going to work. When I say there's no comparison, more so I mean if you're that very advanced rider who loves powered kite loops, you're going to much prefer the dice over the Rebel. Now let's talk about the waves. Now the dice, it's one of those unique crossover kites that does incorporate some wave capabilities that you actually don't see in all the other crossover kites. Now this, uh, this style of crossover kite that incorporates wave capabilities has actually been around for quite a while, but nothing has really stuck until the dice, and I do have to say that to date, this is the best crossover kite with wave capabilities that I've come across. And just something to consider is uh, there are different ways to approach wave riding with kiteboarding. So obviously we have the wave kites that drift and then we have you know the faster kites that can keep up with the riders in the wave in the crossover kites. Now in this instance, the dice, it's not the best choice for onshore conditions, but it absolutely works. It really does excel though in the side and the side onshore conditions. And so what this means is with a kite like the dice, you have to be more interactive with the kite. You know, you have to really position it where you need to. You have to constantly be uh, focusing on it just a little bit and really, you know, moving that kite with you as you're dropping in on the wave. Uh, it does drift a little bit, but it's not going to drift, you know, like the Neo. And that's where uh, the onshore conditions, those kites will really excel. If you go over to something like the Duotone Neo, that kite's going to drift behind you and you're going to have control as you're going down the line. The kite will respond. And that's the one advantage that the Neo really has over the dice in the wave. Uh, aside from that though, for most riders, I'd say 90% of kiteboarders whose main focus isn't just the waves, and even if strapless freestyle or waves is a huge part of your focus, the dice is still a great choice. Now in contrast with the Rebel, it will work in the waves. I know there are riders out there who use it, but uh, I kind of find that the kite can backstall on you quite a bit when you're taking it into the waves. And uh, frankly, it just it wouldn't be my first choice as a wave kite. I, I really do regard this kite as a specialty big air kite. And I'm sure there are those of you out there who are probably thinking to yourself, well, I use my Rebel in the waves all the time. And I'm sure that does happen. You know, if you know how to make it work, it is doable. I've used the Rebel in the waves in a pinch, but it wouldn't be my first choice as a wave kite. Moving on to on-hook riding, just like the waves and kite loops, this is where the dice is just a more versatile kite. Now, when it comes to on-hook riding, obviously you're going to want to be on the dice. It's designed for that unhooked, high-performance freestyle rider who wants to optimize their pop and slack. Whereas on the dice, I know uh, I've seen people on-hook on it, even in their newest product video, uh, there's somebody throwing an on-hook trick on the Rebel. All that said, if unhooked riding is on your radar, you want to be on the dice, you don't want to be on the Rebel. In the grand scheme of things, the dice really is one of the best performing unhooked kites out there. Now being a rider for Matt Kite, I get to choose my quiver of kites every year, and for a huge chunk of the 2018 and 2019 season, the dice was my choice kite. If you follow this channel, you know that I'd probably give that kite a little bit too much attention. Moving back to the Rebel, I've said this before, you really can do almost anything on any kite. And what I found with the Rebel is you can unhook on it, but you have to be perfectly powered, you have to make sure that the kite is trimmed properly, or it's going to backstall on you. It's just not designed to be flown unhooked for long periods of time. And some of you out there, my friends included, might disagree on this point, but in my experience, unhooking on the Rebel has just been unsatisfying. So in summary, I hope this review has given you some perspective on where these kites stack up. 
They really are both designed with a specific purpose and for a specific rider. So choose wrong and you're gonna be missing out. Now the Rebel, like I said, it's that big air, easy to use, rip you off the water kite for those old school riders who want more of a glider, you know, lots of hang time, yet kind of maintains that really direct crispy feel that you can't come by from the other all around kites or big air kites. Whereas the Dice, it's really designed for that high performance rider, that rider that wants to send massive airs with, you know, king of the air style kite loops, or that rider who wants to uh, do high performance on hook riding, and that rider who just wants to dabble in the waves. So if you want to do a little bit of everything on a very high level, and you don't mind giving up ease of use, a big wind range, and kind of that autopilot feel, you would want to go for the Dice. And hey guys, don't forget to click that eye icon where you can open a link in a new tab to our newly cataloged Kiteboarding Knowledge Center. We'll include some bonus content in there and you can also just check out our other gear reviews, our trick tips, our travel guide, and a whole lot more. So hey, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you already have subscribed, click the little bell icon in the same place that you would have subscribed so you can get notifications every time we release a new video. And until next time, this has been Rygo.